How's it going, everyone? Marco here with another techie thing for you. Um, today I'm talking about a uh, Google Nest thermostat that uh, I've actually been using in my home for a while now because um, I recorded this uh, earlier and um, I'm just getting around to um, editing it or putting it together and putting it up now. So um, I shot video of me installing it and I'm going to basically narrate that for you so you know what's going on. And then uh, at the end I'll talk a little bit about um, how it's been for me. Uh, I'll preface it by saying that it's great, huge improvement over what I had before, um, both in convenience and I think it's also saving me some money. Uh, not too hard to set up either. So. Um, all right, let's take a look at uh, the install. So I'm just going to show you the uh, kind of unboxing here. I'm just uh, doing the old one-handed job. I oh, took the top off there. So little box comes in, fairly well packaged. You got the shiny face of it. That's kind of like a mirror finish to it. Two rechargeable batteries it comes with. Uh, you're never supposed to replace them if it's getting power correctly. The uh, yeah, we'll talk about that later. So underneath that, get that off. Ooh, feels so nice. Yes. We've got some paperwork. Paperwork held together with some plastic. We'll put that aside. And what do we got underneath here? Oh, it's the mounting plate. Let's see if we get that mounting plate. Uh, 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 yeah, there it is. All right. Comes with a level built in, which is nice. You can get it. It's uh, top and bottom is set up uh, to put a screw in to the wall, either to a uh, drywall anchor or uh, if you get into some wood. And the connections are on the left and right. Um, that's what you put your uh, thermostat wires into. Um, no screws or anything. They're just uh, spring clip type. Um, Got to make sure you get it stead like all the way in and make sure it really locks down. Kind of give it a tug to make sure it's in there. I'll do that later. Uh, my fish out it just comes with two screws. So uh, if you're putting it in the drywall, you might want to uh, get some plastic uh, drywall anchors to uh, give it a better uh, better hold. Uh, in my case, I was able to go into wood because it was uh, the wiring and the hole came out right by a um, like a two by four. So I just went right into the wood, so it's very sturdy. But uh, you know, things not that heavy. Some going on a drywall will be fine, but I recommend anchors. So here's a little manual there. I think I managed to get it open with one hand. Takes a little bit of. Uh, I realize I should just slide it out instead of trying to open it, probably. Oh, there is me really fumbling with it. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yay. All right. I think we might zoom in a little bit. Shoo. So it gives you the basic steps. It's not super difficult. Um, the wiring can be a bit confusing how you enter it. I believe I ended up doing it twice because um, I have a heat pump system. So it's uh, the same unit takes care of heating and air conditioning. It just runs in reverse to uh, put out hot air instead of cold air. Uh, it's common in the sun belt where it doesn't get too cold. Heat pumps work very well if it doesn't get well below freezing on the reg. Uh, more energy efficient that way. So yeah, just pull out some of the papers here and show them. Get them open with one hand there. You know, that's kind of what it looks like. You can't read anything, but all the controls are on the side of the unit. You give it a tap. On the side with her finger, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, it's fairly easy to operate. Brings up uh, 
the weather outside and the humidity inside. Uh, it's a good thermometer built into it for sure. I noticed that my temps were much different uh, for my old little thermostat that was in there. It was probably pretty, pretty off. And yeah, the shiny finish there with the plastic to protect it. And I give the thumbs up. So, and peace. Peace, everyone. Woo, woo. All right, the old crappy thermostat. Probably when it was installed, the place was, you know, from the 80s, the 90s. Just a circuit board with a couple batteries in it. Got the uh, wires there. There was a blue wire. The common wire wasn't being used. So I needed to uh, hook that up at my air handler and uh, up at the condenser unit, which is on the roof. Make sure it supplies power. And uh, I have an older 90s train unit. And uh, luckily, uh, I was able to follow the wires and uh, kind of match them up at the other ends. and give it power the right way, and then it has the, um, I forget the wires now off the top of my head, but uh, uh, O is the heat pump stuff, green is the fan, uh, Y, I don't know. look up a chart, you know, just Google thermostat wires, and it'll let you know, that's probably in the manual too. So I just uh, showing my unscrewed it. See the screws are in there, and I use this handy drill here and drill driver thing, and I took the screws off and pulled it off. And there's some pliers as well, and a couple little things I used. Got a tiny little screwdriver because I had some tiny little flathead screws that were fastening down the wires to the old thermostat so had to get that out and get those wires out that way thumbs up all right and uh it was painted since uh that was in there so they didn't remove that and that section of wall is unpainted and you can see it was we had some drywall anchors in there before so yeah, I'll have to paint that if I don't want it to look like garbage because it's a different shape. That's a handy dandy little voltage um, uh, kind of just reads if there's a wires hot or not. So it makes a noise if you put it near something that's hot. And Yeah, it still it registered a little bit, but nothing like uh, what the light was, which was actually getting voltage. I had turned off the power at the breaker, which is a very important point if you're working with electric stuff, wires. Turn off the power at the breaker and use something like that, or preferably a actual multimeter to confirm that the power's off. So I did that. I got out some paint for the wall, painted it, which I showed, and while I was at it. I uh, painted just around the areas, you know, there have been some little scuffs and stuff from moving furniture or whatever, where uh, it could use a little touch-up, so painted that. Then I got, uh, just the wire was coming right next to a 2x4 there, you can see in there, so uh, I was able to just put the screws right into that, nice solid uh, mounting for that. And, um, yeah, leveled and... The mount is all ready with the wires coming out, so it's ready to uh, to connect using the, those thingies there. So you just pull back the spring clip and uh, shove the wire in, which I did. Um, just make sure you give it a tug so it doesn't come out, and I kind of just you pop it on after you have it all connected. The face just fits on there. Um, and makes the wire connections and that's me being stupid and zooming in on it and showing it working. I was probably pretty happy about that at the time. 
and uh, yeah. So I'll show it like the side profile. It's a nice, small, little compact um, thermostat. You know, fairly simple, attractive. Uh, that highly reflective face there, showing the uh, paint uh, painting I did around. It was still wet, so obviously it looks different once it dries. It uh, blends in. It's not fully dried yet, so uh, you know. And yeah, so uh, I've had it in for um, quite some months now, and uh, the old thermostat was not programmable. So uh, that was annoying because I like it slightly warmer during the day and slightly colder at night. So now I basically have it go from like during the summer. I, I mess around with it a lot, but I had it go to 78 degrees uh, or 79 degrees during the morning and the day and 78 degrees uh, in the evening at like five o'clock or so. And then 77, like more at night. And uh, I did like a three stage thing with three different temperatures worked, uh, works well for me. And uh, yeah, that way I used to wake up in the night uh, sometimes being too cold. So, um, you know, no point uh, pumping cold air if I'm already asleep, wasting energy on that when uh, I'm not even comfortable with it. So, uh, I uh, just make sure it's cold until a bit after I'm asleep, and then I let it naturally rise up the temperature. And uh, so that's cool, just having the times easily programmable. It has an app where you can track your uh, energy usage, cooling usage every day. Um, I set it up so it runs just the fan and not the actual air conditioning for 15 minutes every hour just to help with air circulation and especially like I close my bedroom door at night and uh, the air can get a bit stale in there. You can have a buildup of CO2 which isn't the healthiest for you while you're sleeping. So making sure that it circulates the air even if it doesn't call for cooling from the AC condenser unit uh, means that there's less CO2 build up more fresh air and that's better for your health, uh, better for a lot of things, your blood pressure, uh, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that, um, it has some cool uh, efficiencies built into it, like um, it will run the fan sometimes, even it will turn off the condenser, the cooling part, but it'll still keep the fan running to make sure it runs air over the coils, which are still somewhat cold, even though they're not being actively cooled, to just kind of leach off as much, um, I guess, of the coolness. In reality, it's the opposite. The heat is always what's being transferred. But um, just get some extra bang for the buck from that cooling coil action. Make sure they kind of stabilize, normalize, to equilibrium a bit more of the temperature and just gets a little more free cooling out of it so that's a cool feature it's called like airwave i think and it'll tell you when it's running and um and seeing the humidity is nice and uh other than that yeah it's just uh, pretty simple um you can have it you can all you can turn it on and off from uh, outside the house with your app um, I don't bother too much with that stuff, um, or auto sensing. I don't like to have all that stuff turned on. Um, but overall it's, uh, it's been a good improvement. Um, oh, once again, just watch out for when you install the wires, when you do the first time setup, it was a little confusing with, um, the selection process and I forget exactly what I did but just pay extra special care like for example if you have a heat pump um, if you depend on which wires you select you have the wizard will lead you to different options and if you don't select the wires the right way you won't have the right option presented to you for what your system is so just double check that before you finish. I had to end up uh, kind of redoing the whole thing, factory resetting it, and um, and redoing the whole thing to make sure uh, it was set up correctly. 
And you know, when you first set it up, make sure you turn on cooling, turn on your heat, um, and you can set it to both heating and cooling, or I just have it set to cooling for the summer, and then I'll change it over to heat uh, in the winter. But uh, now that that's aside, yeah, so overall, I think it's really, it's a must have if you have an old style thermostat for your home. Um, this is a, a must have upgrade, uh, great convenience, uh, adding features, energy efficiency. Um, I got it basically for free through my utility because um, uh, some incentives that they offered. So you should check with that. You might be able to get some money off uh, the purchase price. And um, yeah, it's a big improvement in uh, health, saving money and comfort. So I highly recommend getting a smart thermostat like a Nest. And hopefully this video could help you uh, realize how good it is and how easy it is to install. So thanks everyone. Um, have a good day. Um, and I'll be uh, putting out more of these in the future, so stay tuned. Thanks. Uh, give a like button if uh, you found it helpful. Subscribe and all that stuff. Thanks again. Bye.